All right, good evening, everyone. Um, you're welcome to the third, this is, this is the third day in our series, right? So you're welcome to day three of our clarity section. And um, we're going to go with the first person on our list. So, um, Mr. Alexander, you can go on. So let's start with you. All right, sir. Thank you for the opportunity, first of all. Okay, so the, the thing is, I need your help as, according to what I told you on Facebook, that I have skills, but then it's, I'm not making enough enough money to live by comfortably. Like, you know, when you just get jobs once in a while, like when money just comes, let's say it comes on Monday, and there's nothing until, let's say, maybe Friday, you get that inconsistency. So, like, offline, I repair phones. I'm a smart phone repair technician. Like, I repair phones offline. Online, I learned graphic design about two years ago. I was doing it initially, but, you know, because of this same issue, I left it that most times you won't get people that will pay you for the value you represent. You will get design tools of 1,000, 2,000, you know, but I just left it. Then I started affiliate marketing in October last year. The product I promote uh, for every sale I make over 2,000, 1,200 thereabouts for every sale. So, but the problem is still the fact that I don't make sales every day. There are times that even a whole week can go by and there's no sale. So that is um, the problem and I'll need you to advise on that one. All right. Um, first off, you do phone repairs offline. Did I get that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And you you do affiliate marketing, right? Online. Yes. Yes. Um. So the your question is, how can you get stable income? Is it? Do you need um? clarity on how to get stable income with what you're doing already or you're looking at something else with what i'm doing already but if you can suggest something else that i can go in that will bring that result um i'm flexible enough to adjust all right uh, um the affiliate marketing can you give me a breakdown of how go about it what what is it about where did you get you see the uh, you make a few sales once in a while so how did you get those sales like what have you been doing already all right so when i first started i am in the course that i bought to become an athlete market award they thought inside was to go to sell um, google search for business groups and all that then join those groups, get the contacts of people from groups and message them. But that was quite stressful. And WhatsApp banned all of my accounts that I had to open another. So I left that particular method. Then later on, I decided to just, because on my main WhatsApp, I had over 100 views. So I just explained how it works to people on the status for about some time. And from there, I got the first few sign-ups, um, maybe about five or ten, thereabouts. So after that, I met a guy on Facebook that is an actual marketer and is making quite a number of money from it. So I paid for his kind of mentorship. And what he advised was, so he now gave me the link to a kind of telegram group where uh, they thought about there are actually from Facebook groups, like you post on Facebook groups, you just you post and people, you know, those I'm interested, I'm interested, I'm interested. So, and they private chat to you, and like that, I route them to my WhatsApp and we discuss. And if they are interested, they would sign up, and if not, they move on with their life. So, that's the method I use that's currently. So what, what was the affiliate marketing product about? Like, what did they do? Did they offer services 
or you sell the product to people like um, what is it about two products they have just two products and that is um the rockstar athlete sales strategy course and then they have this whatsapp automation course so what is just all about is when you register um under them you promoting that uh the main course which is the course that makes people an athlete marketer that's the main course you're promoting so like you promote it when people buy, you get your permission in your seller wallet. So that's how it works. All right. Um, I'm not an affiliate marketer. I'm not, um, okay, let me not say I'm not an affiliate marketer. I do affiliate marketing in another way. I do it with blogging. You know, I have some blogs that I create informational content, and when I create those informational content, I'll put my affiliate link. People, people get to visit my blog organically, and they probably buy. You understand? I do Amazon affiliate. Like I, I could write a product, like a review article, like an informational article on a product. The product could be. Um, Let's say, for instance, maybe a gardening tool, you know, that people can use in their gardens and everything. I could write a review about it and um, do my SEO, my search engine optimization, so that it's going to appear on Google. Search. Then if someone reads the article, then they, I recommend that product for them and they buy. And they, they are people that have not seen me before. They don't know what I look like. You understand? So that's my own that's my own definition. Okay, let me not say definition. That's my own reality with affiliate marketing. So any other affiliate marketing that is being done out there, I sincerely don't have an idea. I don't know how they do it. You know, at the point it was a thing in Nigeria. It was everywhere, you know, lots of people were talking about it. And the thing about me is you know me so well, I don't talk about what I don't have an idea about. So, and I'm not interested in so many things. So I do a very few, I do few things in my life. Like, you know, I do very few things. I don't do so many things. I could have idea about a lot of things because I, I read a lot. I consume a whole lot of information. I could have idea, but doing, I do very few things. So I didn't have any kind of experience with the affiliate marketing system in Nigeria. So I'm not an authority. I'm not someone to, I'm not going to come here and say it doesn't work or this is how it works. I don't know. I've not signed up for any of them before because I don't do so many things. So, but I know that in every industry, there is something that is being done dif differently that people succeed in. So if someone is succeeding in your industry, the person is doing what you're not doing. And very few people, there are very few people that succeed in every industry. That's why the, the, the top is always empty. So you see so many people struggling at the, at the bottom of something. It could be any market. you find one or two persons at the top and those two persons are doing what the other people at the bottom are not doing then they are resilient people they are people that they kept on you know when everybody gave up they kept on they put in money they put in energy they put in a whole lot of time they put in effort they are willing to pay they are willing to learn they are willing to go to any length get results those are the people at the top so i'm saying this so that it's going to be like a preamble because that's the reality so what i'm saying in essence is there are people in your industry in what you're doing that are excelling but i can't tell you how to go about it because i've not signed up for the affiliate marketing program that you currently do I'm not going to say 
this is how it's done or go and try it like this but for affiliate marketing the one i know if you want to do it i won't say without stress no i won't say without stress but if you want to do it and get results with it then i think one of the best ways to do affiliate marketing is through blogging you know you do it that way you just need to learn how to set up a website how to write articles and attract people then you put your link that could work it could work with the nigerian space you another thing that might work could be talking to bloggers people that are in the blogging industry already so you talk to them and then uh, they help you there is what they call guest post you know they help you create you could create that article and send to them because they have traffic already they have people visiting their websites they have it could be maybe someone that is blogging about business in nigeria you write an article you give to them maybe you pay them 20 or fifteen thousand. i don't know how much they charge um, but in the foreign space they charge I think about a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars for guest posting. They call it guest posting. You give them an article, they publish it on your website. Sorry, they publish it on their website. Then they they put your link. You know, it could be your link to your affiliate stuff or anything you want to add there. You could add it in the article. They publish it on your behalf on their blog or their website because they have traffic. So these are the ways. Then people do YouTube videos too. Some people build their YouTube channel by doing reviews. They could do reviews, they could then um, teach. Some people could teach something as simple. Let's say they are they are doing an affiliate offer for a software. So what they do is that they come on YouTube and they teach you how to use that software. Like this software can help you to convert AI into AI or whatever. This software can help you to convert this into this. You know, check the link in the description. You're going to see my link, you know, click it. Yeah. So those guys are affiliate marketers. That's their own method to get people to sign up. So if you watch their videos and you sign up, you, you get a commission. Sorry, they get a commission. So what I'm saying is, in essence is, these are ways people do affiliate marketing that is a bit seamless that is not too uh, as if it's not as if you're throwing your, your your yourself at people's faces you're forcing yourself into people you're you know you're trying to be you're putting pressure on people because that's the way i i noticed affiliate marketing was being done in nigeria and um, two three years ago it was it was a mess you understand people People come to my DM, they drop all kinds of like, you know, do you want to make 750,000 in a week? And uh, this one uh, will guide you and rest. But I knew it was not done the right way. So the problem is not the product or the service that you're selling as an affiliate. The problem is how it's being done. So uh, from what you said, you said it's a WhatsApp list, uh, WhatsApp lead or something like that. I didn't get that clearly. but what I'm saying is, if you want to continue in that path, then what you should do is you, you sit back and say, okay, how do I do it that is not that? Maybe the, every other person is doing it this way in our affiliate marketing system, the way they taught us. They taught us to um, go to Facebook and make a post and the rest of it. Can I, can I go to a platform like Medium? and create an account and create article maybe about how to generate leads on whatsapp then i put the link so that i'm going to give value first then attract people then they sign up and i make money or should i create a youtube channel and start teaching people about how to do little things it could be things as little as maybe hiding your status on whatsapp small things then when i do that I put the link to my affiliate and for the fact that I have given them this upfront, they are likely to trust me. So what I'm saying is you could sit back and 
revamp everything you're doing. Then maybe two, three months from now or six months, I don't know, you might start having results. But I'm not going to tell you that this is a step-by-step process you can for your affiliate marketing system because affiliate marketing programs are different. You understand? Like I said, the only affiliate stuff I've done, which I'm still doing, is Amazon. And what we do is you go to Amazon, you sign up as an affiliate, you write, you could sign up as an affiliate. Maybe you have a website in a fishing niche. Maybe you want to be writing about fishes or you want to be writing about how people can go about fishing, maybe how to use the fishing net or whatever. Then you go to Amazon. We'll go to Amazon and find the products that people use in fishing. It could be a hook. It could be net. When you find that product, you write a review article on that product. Then people are going to jump on that review article and probably buy the products that you're going to recommend. So that's the affiliate marketing system that I'm aware of that I know, right? Now, that's it for affiliate. If you can explore other ways, other seamless ways that people do affiliate marketing, like the ones I mentioned are the ones I'm sure of. People use email lists and the rest. And another thing is your affiliate is a bit local based on the Nigerian affiliate from what you said. So if you really want to continue in the affiliate marketing space, then you could, there are some foreign affiliate programs that accept Nigerians, you know. There are a couple of them out there. You could do your research. You could find such affiliate programs, then find ways to find, dig on how to get organic traffic. You could get organic traffic with Quora.com. I think there was a post I made sometime last day uh, when I tried out an affiliate program. I used them. Quora. I think I made $67 from that from, from Quora.com. I was answering people's questions. I was answering questions for people, something like that. But they banned it later. I think they shut down that account later. But these are, you could use Medium, you could use Pinterest. You know, you create pins on Pinterest, like post on Pinterest.com and put your affiliate link. You could go to YouTube and watch videos on how to get organic traffic. You could do that for, it's not going to be instant, the results. You could do that for maybe three to four months before you start getting um, results. That's if you want to stay in the affiliate marketing system in that world. If you want to stay there, it's fine. If you don't want to stay there, then I would ask you, if you have a skill, aside the one you mentioned that you do offline, um, do you have like another skill that you can offer that people can pay you for, a digital skill? Do you have that? I could give you maybe a few tips on how to get clients with that because that should yes. be, uh, all right, what's the skill? Graphic design. The graphic design. Were you here yesterday? No, sir. I just you sent me the link to this um Telegram channel yesterday, so I was not away until yesterday. So this is my first okay. Time. You were the one I chatted with this morning, right? On Facebook. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, someone was someone yesterday. We someone one of the persons um that asked the question asked it around graphic design. So I did a whole lot of explaining that yesterday about um, how the person could go about it. But um, for the sake of this uh, section, let me see if I can just do like, um, you would have to probably go and listen to the one of yesterday again, but let me just do this, you know, because you are not that person, right? Now, when it comes to graphic designs, when people hear graphic designs, everybody starts thinking logo, Flyer, logo, flyer, flyer, logo. You know, that's like the common thing everybody has associated graphic designs with. So, but for me, I would always want to look at it from the other angle. Like, why would everybody ask, associate? Let me not say everybody, most people would associate graphic design with logo and flyer, you know. But there are 
tons of graphic design niches there that people would pay you premium for. And uh, when you pay you premium for those niches, you're not going to have so much competition like you're, you're going to have when you're doing logos and flyers or any of those cover images that they do on social media. So what I'm saying is, I told the guy yesterday, I told him that he should go to an AI to maybe like chat GPT or um, Bing or Google, this Google AI to any of them. You know, you go, you could go there and type sub niches in graphic design. That was what I told him. It's going to, you're going to, if you do the same thing, you're going to find lots of niches in graphic design that are not saturated. You know, you could see anime niches, you could see there are lots of niches in graphic design. For me, I might not even go, if I was a graphic designer, I might not need to go to an AI tool to even find niches. I could just sit down and create, start creating niches in my head. I could, just, like I told him yesterday, I said, if I went to graphic design, I'll be creating templates for people. I could pick one industry, I could say, how to create templates for affiliate marketers. You are an affiliate marketer, and you know that affiliate marketers, they need all their links in one place. They need, um, they could need like their monthly report, you know, in one place. They could need a whole lot of things in one place. So when you create a template for an affiliate marketer, where they could impute, maybe they signed up with this affiliate marketing program, they could put their, the link there, their name, the name of the affiliate program, put their password, everything is going to be there. They could easily access it. You could decide that you want to create a template for those are into e com into the e-com space. Maybe those that those that, that do drop shipping, you know, would want to create a template for them where they could have a record of the products that are coming in, they could track their orders, or they could use it for productivity. Maybe today I'm going to do this task. Today I'm going to do product description. They could seek it. Some, something like an editable template. You could do it for e com owners. You could do create a template for those into Facebook ads. The, the, that template is going to be like to contain their creatives, you know. Uh, maybe the person wants to come up with, maybe the person has an idea that comes to their head. They could just go to that template and impute it. You could divide the template into sections, you know. Like this section is for maybe so, so, so kind of ad. Like you just, you could just do that and sell it to these guys in the Facebook ads. It could be Google Ads, it could, be, it could be anything. It could be a template for writers. The writers could use to keep up with their jobs. and It could just be template for any industry. It could be template for people that are into startup. You know, it could be a productivity, productivity template. It could be a template to keep up with their tasks. I'm just giving you a broad idea, right? That means you could leave the template industry and say, okay, I want to... I want to be helping people to convert all of their posts into visuals. All of their posts that are written in text. So all the people, most of the people that write their posts in text on LinkedIn or on Facebook could find those kind of people and help them to convert it into imagery, imagery format. You know, maybe more like a swipe, or any of those things. That's a niche. It's a niche that people are not even looking into. And you're a graphic designer, you could do that seamlessly with Canva. You know, people do carousels on Instagram. You could be the carousel master. Like I do carousels alone for people. You just go and get them the most colorful carousels out there. You could, that could be your niche. That could be, you could do swipes for people on, on, on LinkedIn. If you go to LinkedIn, you realize that people do swipes, everything. You could go and master 
a platform like Notion, Notion.io. If you go to Notion.io, they have tons. You could create templates for anything. And you could be that person that does templates for all industries. You could focus on Nigerians, you could focus on the foreigners and everything. But you need to hold on to something that is not, you could be designing color books for people. You say, okay, I want to go into designing color books for children. So that people, I'm sorry, for people that sell on Amazon, there are lots of people that do KDP and everything. They sell color books. You could be their designer. You could decide that the only, the only kind of design you want to do is ebook cover design. It could be that you want to design interiors. The only thing you want to do is to design interiors for this book. You could just hold on to that corner and master it build so well that people would point back to you whenever they want that kind of job. So that you're not the usual graphic designer out there. You're more than the usual. Then you could decide that you want to be a brand strategist. You want to help small businesses to make their business look professional, like you're a vendor, you sell shoes. Yeah, let's help you with your branding so that on, on social media, you're going to appear so good. That means you need to sit back and learn branding connected back to your graphic design because we cannot separate branding from design, graphic and designing graphics and everything. We can't separate it because the both of them are interconnected. So you could, you could look into that aspect and for me getting clients getting people that will pay you premium it's not difficult especially when you pick that tiny niche and say okay you want to build so well in it it's not difficult first of all if you start it with a small number of people people are going to find you trust me like if you are so good at what you do Oh, find you. But before people find you, you need to find people. And one, one way that works is you need to start looking out for the faults. You know, people design, people do a whole lot of things out there and they do it by themselves. Someone could go, go to Canva. Someone could go to Canva.com and design something for themselves. But the person is going to do it in an unprofessional way that doesn't make sense. So your job is to now reach out to them, tell them that if it's being done this way, it would have made sense. That means you'd have done it in the correct. If the person has done it already, you go back and do it better. And bring it with the old one, send to the person like, I had to redo this for you. This is a professional. You know, you didn't, the color combination wasn't too fine, wasn't too professional here on the stage. You could do that and land the premium client. But what I'm saying in essence is you could even, if you, if you decide you want to be doing swipes, like you want to convert people's posts into swipes, convert it first and reach out to them. They're not going to reach out to them and say, I can help you to convert your this thing. Those are, they might not respond. Some might respond and say, okay, I don't need it. Because they don't have an idea of what you're saying. They just feel it's unnecessary. But you could tell them that I did it already. This is it. I took this post and converted it into swipes for you, for your audience. They linked in so much. Some people, some top creators on LinkedIn do it. But there are some average creators on LinkedIn that don't do it. You could now start looking for people that maybe they have 5,000 to 10,000 followers on LinkedIn, connections on LinkedIn that are not doing it. You do it for them. Pick one of their good posts. Do the conversion. I see you as a brilliant person because it has to do with intelligence. I see you as an intelligent person. So you do it smart in a very smart way. Send it to them. Tell them that other creators are doing making swipes like this, and I did it for you. Um, you can share it to your audience and see their response and see how they respond to it. 
when you do that, they give you a response. You've landed a premium client. They could say, can you do more posts? Can you go back to the past? Can you go back to one year ago and take some of my posts and convert it like this? It could be someone that is into podcast. Person is into podcasting. You can help them to take snippets of their podcast and convert it into imagery. You could just sit down and think of a lot. If you know how to do video editing, you can combine the both, help people to convert their podcast into visuals. You could do that. You must not go where everybody's going. That's what I'm saying. You do that. The beautiful thing about seeing it from this angle is that you land one, one or two clients and you're going to work for them continuously because if you're, let's say you're doing the swipe thing, you're, um, um, you're helping people to convert their posts into swipe and everything, then you're going to do it. It's going to be a job continuously. So what I'm saying in essence is you must not follow the crowd. The moment you start following the crowd, you get the kind of results that the crowd gets. I've always preached it from the beginning of this um, clarity section. If you listen from the first day, I've been saying the same thing. What I do is I teach people to see, to see things differently. I try to teach people to, I do mindset, I do mindset thinking because when we say mindset, sometimes we think it's motivation. So we mistake mindset for motivation. Like, oh, he's a motivational speaker. He's motivating us. I don't motivate people. I tell you reality. Like, I tell you that this is how things go. I will prefer to change people's psychology than motivate them. So what I do is I tell you, go and study how humans think. If you can study how humans think, you have won in life. You you can succeed in almost everything out there. So most of the things I say, I do it from a place of psychology. Study how humans react to things. Start seeing it from that angle. That means crowd mentality. You never find me nowhere. You're not going to find me doing the crowd thing. I don't follow the crowd. I don't listen to the crowd. I, the last time I listened to, to mainstream news was, I think it was 2019 or 2020. I don't listen to news. I don't do most of the things people go out there. That's why I'm sane. That's why maybe I could think deep. I know what I feed my brain with every day. I listen, I listen to podcasts. I read. I go to online communities. I, I, I digest clean information. I don't digest crap. I digest clean, refined information. If I see a trend out there, I don't read any of the trends out there. So that it's not going to mess up my mind. Because the, the moment your mind is messed up, your intelligence drops. For every time you mess up your, your space with negative and tragic stories and everything, you start, start becoming less intelligent. But I don't want to go into that, right? I'm just telling you in essence that you should start thinking the other way. And what is the other way? Where people are not looking at, you know, everybody is going to do logos and you now sit back and say, is there any other thing out there that people are not doing? So I've given you pointers, I've given you tips, I've given you, like I said, you could just decide that it's templates you want to be doing. When you now decide that you want to go into doing templates, you would realize that there are thousands of niches that you could do templates for specifically. You could just do it for them, customize templates. Like you're into this industry, I'm going to customize a template for you that is going to help you do this, this, this. Then it's going to give you this, this, this result. Simple. And the beautiful thing is you could sell your templates over and over again. It's a digital product. You understand? The digital product is not something you produce at home. So you do it once, sell it. Or you could do customized templates for people like you. Customize it to their industry or to their specific 
you know, if the person is a Facebook ad, for, for me, what I would ask you to do, I don't know how, how, how much your audience, how, how um, reactive your audience on social media is. If you have a reactive audience, you could do a survey, you understand? You might not do it on social media, you could do it on Naira Land. You could go to online communities. You could create a form. Create a form. For me, I think this should be one of the best approaches you should use. You create a form on Google. Use Google Form. Create a form. And um, that form, you could ask questions like, um, what is your occupation? Uh, you don't need to take their names. What is your occupation? What do you do? And what have you been struggling with? Have you been struggling with productivity? Okay, if you've been struggling with productivity, if you if you have access to a template that is going to help you impute your task and everything, would you would you love such? Okay, if yes, can I send you a template? You could do the template for free, maybe for 10 persons or 15 persons or 20 persons. So that you validate the idea that okay, people are really interested in this. Then, with that, you could now start looking to sell it, or you can sell it to the first set of people that feel the form. Like okay, if you want to, if you want access to this kind of template that will help you get this this kind of result, that will help you improve your productivity, that will help you with following up your task and everything. How much do you think you can? pay for it. They can decide the price that they want to pay for it. You could go to a platform like Reddit. Reddit.com is an online community. You could go to Black Hat World. You could go to DM Forum. You could go to Fast Lane Forum. There are lots of forums out there. But the problem is we want to die on social media. Social media is just one part of the internet. These days, I spend in a day, I spend less than one hour on social media. I think I've been doing it for the past one year now. I don't even come to social What I do is I come, publish content, and move out. I'm just using it to keep my timeline, to keep my page active. I don't read, I hardly read posts these days. Sincerely speaking, I'm being sincere here. I hardly go to social media to go through my feed, my news feed. Sometimes I do it at night. Sometimes I do it at weekends, during the weekends when I'm resting. But I spend time in communities. People you find in communities, online communities, they have the best results ever. That's where you see real people that are getting real results. Social media people, 95% of them has no results. They are just people that are floating. They are floating on the surface. Most of them tell you they make 750k in a week, 500 they don't, they don't see Gary drinks. They don't see subs. They are struggling. But the problem is, struggling is not a crime. The problem is, when you are struggling and nobody knows, people think that is, people don't know that. People think you're not struggling. That's the worst place to ever be. Because nobody's coming to your aid. People feel you're fine. And that's one of the results of Soaking yourself so much in social media. And I should be very sincere with you, social media, you can't you can get transformation on social media. Sincerely speaking, you can hardly get transformation. Because the, the information you find on social media, they are busy. If you go go through your news feed or Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or anywhere, you realize that the information is basic, basic information. By basic, I mean someone that will come and say, procrastination is bad. Stop it. Man, <laughs> you understand? Stop procrastinating. Then people will come and react and say, oh, yeah, awesome. Procrastination is not good. And they, they move to the next post that says, um, you should not tell your wife, shut up. And that's it. They do that all day. That's it. But there are people that get real results, people that are doing stuff, people that are doing affiliate marketing so well, people that are doing Facebook ads, 
people that they are in communities, they are not on social media. Even if you find them on social media, you're going to find them in groups. I mean, if you go to Facebook groups, you're going to see people that are getting real results, not on your news feed. Mm. The people that are getting real results, they are hardly on social media posting. And I'm serious with you. You know, some of them, the ones you see that are getting results, that are active on social media, they are building a personal brand. And they have a reason why they are building a personal brand. They want to use their personal brand to sell their next business. It's just like me. <laughs> just like me, I'm building. Everything I'm building is one of the reasons is because I, I'll be launching, I'm planning to launch three platforms this year. I'm planning to launch a software where people can um, take care of their business leads and everything. I'm planning to launch those things. And one way or the other, I'll be needing validation from people. And I can get that validation from the audience I've built. It's one of the reasons I'm building because, man, we need each other. So what I'm saying is you could take out time from social media. You could take a break. Nothing is going to happen. You're not going to miss nothing. Take a break. Go back. And study. Go to online forums and study this world. Go there and network with people. There are people you're going to network with. There you now realize that, oh, they are complaining. They are complaining about this, this, this. Then you connect it to your graphic design skill. Like, okay, they are complaining about this. Can I help them with my graphic design skills? Okay, can I create a template that is going to help them with this, this, this? Oh, awesome. That's what I'm talking about. And these people will pay you premium. They are ready to pay. For me, there was something I said. I'll be running up with you now. There was something I said on the first day we started this section. I said something. I said, I don't care what people do out there. I don't care how it's being done. I don't care what people do. If people are joking, if people are playing, anything they are doing out there, I don't tell people how to do stuff or when is the right time to do so. I care about results. <laughs> if you're not getting results in what you're doing, you're just you're wasting a whole lot of time. So anything someone is doing out there, the person is, some people tell you that the best way to create content is by doing it like this, is by doing it like this. Don't listen. Anything anybody's putting out there is fine. But for me, Results. I don't joke with results. After you've done everything you're doing, can we see what came out of it? If nothing is coming out of it for a longer time, you're doing it, you're doing it, nothing is coming out of it, and there is no nothing you're seeing ahead of you that we're not getting the head with. You're going to be wasting a whole lot of time in your life. And it leads to frustration. People just get frustrated. Some people come on social media and they get frustrated maybe after one year of doing the wrong thing. That's, that's why I created a post a few days ago on hope. <laughs> created that post. I said, when your hope is built on nothing, you wake up and you're hoping that one day you go better. Nothing is going to get better any day. Wishes don't turn to realities. The only time your wishes become realities is when they are worked on, when they are planned for. You need to be deliberate. You need to be so intentional about bringing those wishes to reality. If wishes were horses, beggars are going to ride on it. If wishes were everything we thought it was, all of us would not be billionaire because the year is going to start. And everybody will be screaming like, this is my year, this is my year of this. Before they know the year don't end. Because you were living with wishes and hopes. Hopes that are built on nothing. Wishes that are built on nothing. Meanwhile, there are people that wake up every day and they are striving to find solutions. Since January, I've been learning how to build SaaS app. 
I've been learning. If you see my recent post, you'll realize that I've been learning. I'm on Reddit. I'm following all the creators, all the people that have built stars apps before me. I'm building mine as we speak. Then when I'm done building, someone will now look at me. When I've done all, taking all the, drain myself of, of energy and everything, putting time, putting resources, then someone will see me and then also, oh my, I just wish I, I go to get this TV. You know, you don't go get that. <laughs> you can't. Until you pass, that my process, you go to pass, you go pass through that process to get, you want to create a SaaS app, Go and learn it. Go and watch YouTube videos for, for eight hours. Go and watch it for 10 hours. Then we will have a conversation. That's what I'm talking about. Sometimes I talk with people and I tell them, go and do this and get back to me. And they don't get back to me. And I don't give it them. I don't, give, I don't care. Because we can only show people, but we can't help them to do so. You can only point the toilet to someone like, hey, look at the toilet. You could, that's the maximum you could do for someone. Look at the toilet door. The person goes to the toilet and you, you can't, nobody can defecate on your behalf, like go to the toilet on your behalf. Has it happened before? I've not heard. Even your parents, you, even as a kid, as an infant, your, your mama goes still carry you put for that this thing. Now you go still, you know, release the thing. They are not going to do it for you. So you realize that <laughs> There's a limit to how we could help people. So I'm just saying this. I had to add that. I know it's, um, I had to extend to that because if you want to get results, that's why I said everything I said. If you want to get results, you need to put in effort. You need to, you need to be very intentional. You need to put in effort. You need to get serious. And seriousness will come in categories. There are some seriousness that are wasted seriousness. I'm talking about being serious in the right way so that you're not wasting time on nothing. And being serious in the right way is being in the midst of people that are ahead of you, people that are getting results. And where do you find such people? Online communities. You would hardly find them on social media. They are on social media, but their face will show. They're not to show. Go to online communities make connections, build relationships. Most of the clients that you're going to get are going to, you're going to get them from online communities. Most of the people that you're going to do these templates for that are going to pay you or you want to do branding, you want to help them to brand their startups, maybe you want to target people that are going into tech. The only place where you're going to find them in abundance would be online communities. You could go to Google and type online community. Just join. Join all those communities. They have categories. Naira Land is an online community, but it's for Nigerians. You could, you could try Naira Land, but I'm not on Naira Land because my, the th most of the things I do, I target foreigners. But what I'm saying is you go to those communities and learn, see, ask questions. You're going to get real-time answers. These people are going to give you answers based on experience, not based on chat GPT knowledge. Now, I think this is eight o'clock. I've um, I've used almost forty minutes for <laughs> for Alexander. Okay, um, I don't know if I missed anything, Alexander, so that we can move to some other person and probably round up um, for today. You can unmute and. Uh, let me know. Thank if you, so anything, if you have any other question, I can attend to. Uh, it was All right. very amazing and insightful. Thank you so much. I don't know if I still have a little time to just ask one more question, just a bit of question, just one more, if I still have the opportunity. All right. Um, let's see if we can use five minutes to attend to that. Okay, go on. And then, um, sorry, before right. you go on, if you have any question after Alexander, then just get it ready so that I will attend to you immediately. I will ask if you on meet, then we go on. All right, you can ask. All right, sir, thank you. So I don't, um, I heard about Amazon KDP. 
recently. But then I was just I was skeptical because I don't want to be a kind of jack of all three trying to do this, do that, do that. But according to the person, he said that it's something you can do that it does not involve active marketing that you don't need to source for clients, look for customers or whatever. All you do is to create the books and follow the guidelines and then you create the books on Amazon and Amazon does the marketing, the selling of products. You just get the money in your account and all that so that you don't, it does not involve like actively looking for people to buy the books. I don't know if you get, so I'm just thinking if, um, what do you think? Is this something that you'd advise someone to go into or not? So that's my question. All right. Um, first of all, let me address uh, from what the person said, according to you. you know, the person said there is a market and then um, seamless. You understand? It's seamless. There's a market already. Amazon does the marketing for you. And uh, for me, when people present stuff with ease, like this thing is so easy. I'm skeptical. I become very skeptical because I don't like the word easy. The moment you bring easy close to me, I cut you off. I don't even like people that love easy stuff. If you love if, if, you, if you want things to be so easy, if you're looking, if you love shortcuts, I don't go fit me and you don't go get anything. And I've been like that for a very long time. Maybe that's why I've not gotten the kind of money I want to get. Maybe sorry, the kind of money that maybe I would have gotten, and I don't care. I'm a process kind of person, and I could be very real when it comes to being real. You know? Now, the thing, I don't know about Amazon KDP that much, but um, I know that it's a saturated market. And the problem is people present, people present it as if they piece of cake. You know, go there, publish a book, it's going to start selling. Which is a fallacy. It's a big fallacy. The person that is telling you that, I also ask you this question. The person that told you that, he wants to sell a course to you, right? On Amazon KDP. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now that course, when the people survive, now be own chop, now the I would think they take whole body with that. Now, this is a reality. Just like someone that tells you, I'll teach you how to make this amount of money. You know, stop doing your nine to five. Why would you be working? You wake up every morning, you want to stress yourself. And so you're stressing yourself, you know, why you can work from the comfort of your home, blah, 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 you know. You know, <laughs> you know those things you see out there. You can fire your boss, you know. They, they see all those crappy things out there. And then um, the person that tells you such things depends on what they are going to get to you to teach you a method that doesn't work or to teach you something that they have not gotten results from. I know. I know the industry. I know the knowledge-based industry. I know how it operates. There are more people that tell lies than there are very tiny, there's a small, tiny number of people that tell you the truth, and I'm one of them. First of all, if I wanted to bring everybody to this Telegram group and sell something to them later, I'll tell them from the onset. I'll tell them that, hey, if I do clarity section with you, if I do all everything, at the end of the day, I'm going to ask some persons to reach out to me. They need one-on-one -on -one clarity section so that they can pay me. I don't I never had that in my plan. My plan was, I'll be done with the clarity section, help as much people as I can help, and we shut it down. I'll shut down the group. <laughs> and that's me. I did it last year. I've done it several years. I've held master classes on content marketing. When I'm done, two, three days, I'll close down the group. Everybody goes. That's it. That's me. If I want to sell, then they should know that I'm selling. So I hate manipulation. I hate manipulation. Manipulation doesn't work. I hate it so much. So what the person is doing, the person is 
telling you what they tried out and it didn't work. So when you try out something, it doesn't work. The next thing is, man, I don't waste time to try this thing. It'd be like I go tell another person, say it work, so that I go fix it for sure. That's the right thing. Now, do people get results on Amazon? Lots of them. Get results, you make money, but then there are people that don't. If you understand the right result, you know, those are the people you should listen to. That means that's where results come. I told you earlier that I don't joke with results. If you don't have results, I'm not listening to you. So if the person is telling you anything, then the person should show you their dashboard. And the person should, when they show you their dashboard, They should show me a life dashboard. Like, this is what I make it the most. I don't. And the people that didn't succeed with me, what are they going to sell to me? They'll sell the success that they didn't have to you. And it's very easy to sell something that you don't have. It's very easy these days. People, if you go to charge GPT, charge GPT is going to create a book for you. Imagine someone that's not driven a car before in their life. They can create an ebook on how you can buy the car and they sell it to you, claiming that they've driven the car. So when you reach out to the person and now tell the person, I bought your book on how to drive the car. When I was now driving down uh, Oshodi, then the car went off. I didn't know where to touch. The person disappears because they've not driven the car before. <laughs> they gave you knowledge, they didn't give you experience. So buy experience, avoid buying knowledge. Knowledge can be gotten anywhere. You can you could pick knowledge on the floor these days. Everywhere on the internet there is knowledge. But I'll tell you something. Experience, you can't pick it anywhere. Experience is hard. That's why people hardly sell experience. Experience can't be picked anywhere. What I'm doing with you guys here is experience. I'm not coming to tell you who I think is like this. I've been talking with people since 2020 doing clarity section. So I'm coming from a place of experience. That's why I could boldly say, oh, everybody come, let's do this. Let's do a clarity section. I cannot start clarity section with you guys for the first time. I'll be messing up. Everyone is going to speak to me that, hey, no, so doesn't even know anything. Ah, God, they ask on this question in the fine way to dodge them. So I'm coming from a place of experience. That's why I have so much confidence to bring people together and say, ask me questions. Because one way or the other, even if I don't have full answer, I should have an idea because I've been talking with people. That's the difference between knowledge and experience. If you want to buy stuff from people, buy stuff from people that have gotten results, gotten experience, they feel that they found a way around their failures and they got back on their feet and they got results. Those are the people you should listen to. Those are the people. So if you can show you life, results and give you his template like okay this is how i do it this is the result i've gotten from doing it then listen to him maybe you might not get the kind of results he has or you might even get more results than him but i'll tell you for for free there are lots of nigerians that are struggling on amazon PVP, and i know i know them they know me <laughs> they are struggling but i see them and they make posts I'll just smile, like, wow, this is what I said. They talk this guy to, like, this is not fair. But they do it. They need to survive, you know? They need to survive. Then you reach out to them after you didn't get results, and they tell you you're not doing it right. You know, they find all, all, all sorts of excuses and everything. So, um, if you want to do Amazon Kid, for me, um, I would not even advise to buy any course out there, <laughs> you know? Find the free resources you can. Most of the free resources out there on Amazon KDP is far better than what you're going to buy. Find the free resources. Make mistakes. I know you're avoiding mistakes. That's the problem. Everybody's trying to find, oh, where's the easiest way to get to this restaurant? You do it and you mess up. The easiest way to get anything is with money. If you don't have money, then you should be, you should be 
ready putting effort. Is that you have effort or you have money? For me, there are lots of things I'm not going to learn now because I really don't have that time. I'm not even a kid anymore. So there are lots of things I can't learn at my age now because I really can't put in that time, to that commitment and everything. Anything I'm learning now is something that is going to give me a specific kind of income. If it doesn't give me that kind of income, I'm not interested. But seven years ago, man, I could I, I gave my time to a whole lot of things, effort. So now I could use money, I could use part of the money I make to get some things done. But that's not the, the, the that's not the phase you you are in your life now. That means you could you could decide that the next three months I want to learn Amazon KDP in another way that is not being done. You could you could you could dis, you could go into Amazon KDP and discover another need or another way of doing it to get results. That's what I'm saying. So I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying do it right. And most of the people out there, they are not going to give you the results you want. They're going to waste time, waste money with your courses, and they abandon you and find their next victim. Find free information, digest as much free information as you can. Do it by yourself. Test it. If you fail, no problem. If they shut down your account, you create another account. Do it. Three months, four months. Dedicated, you will find, you're going to find the headway. Right? So that's my, I think I should end here. Um, I don't know if that, um, I don't know if I answered that question. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, um, so, I'm so excited. I'm so grateful. Thank you very much. God bless. You're welcome. And, um, okay, let's um, let's get someone else. Uh, you can just unmute and uh, you can unmute and ask your Christian. Any, any other person, unmute and ask your Christian so that we can move on. All right. Hello, Sam. So, good evening to you. Good evening. Who are the top Hello, people? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Can you hear me? All right. This is, this is Timothy Oko. Oh, team. Timothy, you're welcome. How are you doing now? Yeah. I did fine, sir. Oh. You see, you can't come now. Okay. My question. All right, go on. Should I go ahead? Yeah, fire down. I can't uh, come. Uh, Wait till you can't come. All right. Okay. I don't hear yeah, you don't know, skip I that side. What did you do? Like, <laughs> okay, I just say you're very much to form. I said a question, I can't come. I just say you're very much to form you. No, Allah. All right, fire down. It's all right. Okay. So, I'm first of all, yeah. So, thank you so much for the sessions i've really been learning a lot okay my question now is what advice would you give someone that is in his early 20s now as a person i'm in my 300 level in the university and i need to know the exact thing i should be doing as a person so that i wouldn't regret not maximizing my period in the later years of my life so that's my question. I don't know if you got me. All right. Um, if I got you right, you you want to avoid mistakes, right? So that you're not going to. Is that what you're saying? Mm, kinda. Not really to avoid it, but to minimize the number of mistakes I would make while going higher up in life. Okay, um, I will not, at this, um, at this phase of your life, you shouldn't be, you not to afraid to um, minimize or make mistakes. And I'm very serious about it. Though there are some mistakes that are costly, you understand? There are mis some mistakes that are costly, but um, I want to see you as someone that 
is not going to make that kind of mistake. By costly mistakes, I mean, um, for instance, maybe you want to go into fraud, you know, you want to go into something illegal. That's a mistake that is very costly. But besides that, legitimate um, um, mistakes you do legitimately, like legal, <laughs> legitimate mistakes are allowed. You understand? The, the reason why I could um, talk with people today, and I'm very sincere about this, the reason why I could talk with people and help people to this extent was because I messed up a whole lot. I messed up in my 20s, like I made lots of mistakes, silly mistakes, you know, and uh, I'm in my 30s now, right? So now I'm not saying you should go and make all the mistakes in the world. But don't be too mindful of making them. Don't be too mindful. If you're too mindful, you might, you're going to probably end up average. That's if you want to end up average, if you want to be an average person. But if you don't want to be an average person, if you want to be that, if you want to be a disruptor, you know people that they call disruptors, have you heard of them? Have you heard that term before, disruptors? Timothy, are you there? No. Have you heard of disruptors before? Have you heard that term? I don't know if Timothy can hear me. I'm trying to, I want us to interact. That's why I'm asking you the question. I said I've not heard it before. Oh, okay, okay. I was not hearing you. Maybe the was from the network. Okay, what I'm saying is um, disruptors are... I'll just give you a practical instance. Elon Musk is a disruptor. If you've heard of Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs, who um, came up with the Apple thing and everything, Steve Jobs was a disruptor. Because then those guys are not normal. You know, normal people don't... They don't do stuff. In, on, you understand? They don't do stuff that... They don't, they don't shake the world. They don't... They don't invent stuff that would help their generations. They are just normal people are just there. They just they just come to this world, they just leave. They just use what disruptors have invented. They just go. You know, which is fine. Everybody's not going to be a disruptor. Matter of fact, matter of fact, disruptors are very few. One generation might have just 10 disruptors or 20 of them. Like is they are very few in number. You understand? But if you want to be that kind of person that you want to make impact, then mistakes should not scare you, you know. But what I would say is, um, I'll ask you, first of all, I'll ask you some questions. What do you do at the moment as a student? Okay, as a student, I also do graphic design and then I am into some organizations and then serving leadership roles. Okay, well, I think that's basically what I do as, as a student. All right. And um, what do you plan doing later? Let's see how fast you. Do you have any solid plan? Do you have a blueprint? Like, I plan to be a public and then also practice my profession. I'm studying physiotherapy in the university, so I plan to double with being a physiotherapist, a public speaker. All right. And then into tech the lead to these three things that are the core areas. All right, it's fine. Okay. Um, are you still speaking? I think your no, network I'm is breaking. Speaking. Okay, okay. All right. Um, now, since you want to, that's like what is ahead of you. That's like the dream. That's like what you want to go into. Um, but 
it's funny. The funny thing is you might end up not doing that. There is a probability, the probability is high that you might end up not being a public speaker. You might end up, you might end up not even doing your physiotherapy at the end of the day. Maybe you might end up not being in that field. Now, this is reality. I'm telling you this and I'm not being pessimistic. I'm telling you reality. So that you start building your mental space towards because we're talking about minimizing mistakes. You're going to make a whole lot of them. I'll not tell you how to minimize mistakes. I'll tell you how to face them when they come. You need to use your mental space. If you're trying to minimize mistakes, you might not be that kind of public speaker that you're, you're aiming at. You might not be. Because thank God you mentioned public speaking. You realize that 99% of people in your in, in that industry, uh, when they talk, when they are sharing, when they are talking, they share from a place of experience stories. They usually come with stories. Like I remember when I was this in 2011, in 2001, I did this. In 1999, I did this, and I messed up, and I came back to my feet, and that's. That's what make that those are the things that make that profession interesting. Am I lying? When people most public speakers tell you stories, and these stories are the only way it's going to be relatable most times is when it's coming from them, like this happens to me, or it happened to someone I know that is very close to me. So that's why I'm saying I'm not saying you should jump into mistakes intentionally, but so mistakes are unavoidable. You can't avoid them. So the problem is when you're trying to avoid an unavoidable mistake, you might be you might be draining mentally. You could you could kill yourself for nothing. For instance, there are some things beyond our control, but we try to control those things. We try to control those things. The rain, the the rain that falls. We can't tell the rain when to fall. You understand? The same way, there are some things we can control now in our life. A government policy might be out there, and you cannot do anything about the government policy. You could scream. You could come to social media and say, oh, everything that is in your head, like, oh, this government is so wicked and everything. Why would they do this? And you're going to say that. You're going... You say that you go to bed and you wake up the next day and the policy is still there. Nothing changed until the government decides that, oh, we want to, we want to change its policy all over again. So those things are things we don't have control over. The way people are going to react to you, the way people are going to respond to you, you're looking for a job, you're looking for a placement, you're looking for maybe you you see one public speaker that is known, like the person is big, one big public speaker, and uh, maybe you want you want to just volunteer for the person, like you know, sir, can I be working with you so that I can learn in the process? And the person says no, that no, there is no space. To... You can't control how the person responds to you. So there's a whole lot of things. You might want to you might want to graduate when you're maybe when you're twenty five or twenty six and maybe because of ASU strike or anything, or maybe something could happen and it's extended. You don't have control over that. But the funny thing is lots of people are so focused on those things that they can't control. And they think there is a way out of it. Like we, I should be able to control this. They know within themselves that I don't have power over this thing. But the struggle, that's what they wake up to. Like someone wakes up and the person is thinking about something they can't change. That's the worst way, one of the worst ways to live. That's what I'm telling you now. That's, and what you're saying, minimizing mistakes. You're trying to minimize mistakes 
And one of the ways to drain in that those kind of thoughts is trying to control things that are not under your control. There are some of them that are under your control that you, you might just let them happen so that you gain experience. That's what I'm saying. So you build your mental space to be able to face what is coming ahead. You're trying to avoid what you cannot change. You're going to, you might not be, you might end up being a mediocre, like a normal average person. You might just be, okay, that's it. But you don't want to be that kind of person. So what you should do now is open up and say, if the challenges come, if I make mistakes, I'm human, you know? Nobody is exempted. All your mentors, all the people you admire, all the coaches, all the big guys, they make stupid mistakes. <laughs> you know, some of them don't come out there to see you. They show you the perfect, the perfection thing, like, oh, I'm good. You know, some of them make marital mistakes. Some of them make financial mistakes. You admire these people and you don't know that they make deadly mistakes, stupid mistakes that you're going to hear of, and you say, wow, you self, you follow the this kind of thing. That's it. That's what makes them human. That's why when I see people say, I'm disappointed in this influencer, I'm disappointed in this celebrity. Why are you disappointed in someone, a human? You're disappointed. What were you expecting? Were you expecting the person not to disappoint you? So, for me, it's dumb to be disappointed in people. I'm not disappointed in anyone. As I did like this now, I'm not even going to be disappointed in myself because circumstances could change and you just realize that there are some things you're doing that you're not supposed to, that you said you have not done. So, there are Life is complicated. There are lots of things ahead of us. In the next 10 years, I don't know what I'm capable of doing. In the next 20 years, I don't know. What I'll just do, what I do every day I wake up is I watch, I try to watch my ego. I try to watch my ego. I try to, what I do is I track my activities. Now, so how did you respond to the last person you talked to? How did you do this? How did so I track my daily activities, my daily attitudes, daily habits. I do it so that I'll be updated about myself. I'm not looking at the future. I don't want to be so concerned about, oh, will I be this kind of person in the future? I might be so concerned about that, that I'll miss out on the present. That means I'll be messing up in the present while I'm so focused on how will I start acting when I get to this point? No, I don't want to get to that point. Let me be acting right now. Can I be the best version of myself now? Some people tell you, I messaged this influencer and he didn't respond. They tell you that, and in the next four or five years, they are influencers themselves. The same person that told you, I, this influencer, you know, the answer person, you know, the not person, you know, the, in four or five years, they are now influencers and they don't respond to messages. Just like the other influencer they blamed in the past. This is human. And funny thing is, sometimes you're so engrossed with how people live their life, how people react to things that you forget your own self that you, you're even, react to, you're even reacting to things that you accuse people of. So what I do is I sit back and say, how do I live? How do I live daily? How do I live daily? So I check myself every day. How did I talk to this person? Did I sound harsh? Oh, maybe I have to slow it down. Maybe. That's how I gauge myself. So that before I did not, I don't reach 80 years. I cannot be perfect, but I should, go, I should try to be on the right path of life at most times. So what I'm saying is, um, what you should do is open up yourself. Don't be, don't be too scared of minimize, all the minimizing thing and everything. If you're trying to do that, um, you're going to be average or below average. Then secondly, um, what you should do now is start digesting 
things from people that are ahead of you in your industry. Start listening to their interviews. Go to go and download Google. You could download Google Podcast. You could download Spotify. You could download these apps. You know, go and listen to the interviews. I'm not talking about the conferences that public speakers they spoke in. No, I'm talking about interviews where someone is asking them direct questions, where they get to, to say about things that they don't see on stage. If you want to get someone, one of the places you could get people to tell you things that they don't see on stage would be in interviews. If you want to learn about someone, you want to learn about someone, maybe someone you are trying to pick one or two things from, then listen to their interviews, listen to the way they respond, listen to their reactions, listen to their the way they take attacks, the way they see they are defensive or if they are offensive. You need to study these people in your industry. Then see the mistakes they are making. See what they've done in the wrong way. Some of them really messed up. There are some, like I said, there are some mistakes that can be redeemed. There are some mistakes that can be taken back. You can't do anything about those mistakes. Like anything where you talk. There are some celebrities today that they made grave mistakes that you can't turn, they can't turn back the hands of time. There are some mistakes that are permissible, that are pardonable, but there are some that can be redeemed. So if you're going in that field, if you're going into that industry, start looking out for those kind of mistakes that are not redeemable. Those are the mistakes I would ask you to avoid. I'm not even asking you to minimize them. You should avoid those kind of mistakes, those ones that you can redeem. And those mistakes are there. For instance, if a celebrity rapes a woman, or if a celebrity is a pedophile, like rapes a child or rapes a woman, it's not redeemable. You can't, nothing in go talk for this world where people go can say, oh, he has killed. That's, that image, that image can be redeemed. You understand? Most not call that celebrity to a concert so that they will not be associated with that image that celebrity now has. Most people would not even want to take pictures with celebrity because that mistake is irredeemable. You know, maybe sleeping with a child, maybe the celebrity slept with a child of 10 years. Man, the public is not going to. That is the end of that person. The person can't come to know and want to refrain. No. So those are the kind of mistakes you should now avoid. But making mistakes like, oh, maybe you went on stage and you want you wanted to make a speech and you now made the maybe you stuttered or you 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 stumbled, maybe you you were trying to climb the stage and you fell down. Those mistakes, what they then now? Uh, ah, almost for me self is even fun because I could go back to those, I could go back to those mistakes and watch it and laugh. Man, see when I was starting out, I made these mistakes. That's that's what makes life interesting. We should not be trying to avoid those kind of mistakes. Like, oh, I want to appear so perfect. I want to go to I want to come on stage and be the best. Just <laughs> forget those all those things, you know. Just go there. If you make some mistakes, you learn from them, you come back again, you become a better you, you know, just like this clarity section I'm having. With you guys, I didn't realize for anything. I wasn't. I didn't even plan for anything. If you see my screen, you're just going to realize I, is, I just did a slide, the normal slide, Q and A clarity section with not so easy. and that's it. That's me. I'm so natural. I don't want to come and be so prepared, over prepared, like you know, I'll be so over prepared and mess up everything and make it so official and make it so boring. And no, I want to. I just want to be myself. That's why I take out this time, make it two hours. Normally, I could attend to 10 people in 10 minutes and call it a clarity section. For me, I don't, I don't speak as that, you know. So what I'm saying is learn the mistakes, sorry, um, learn from the mistakes that are irredeemable. There are lots of people in your, there are some people in your industry that would have done stuff. Some of them would say it in their interview. Go and listen to their podcast. 
and start preparing your mental space. Because I'll tell you something. The reason why someone would say, I can't do this. The reason why someone would say, I can never do this. 99% of the time is because they have never been there. So I can't accept bribe. If you give, oh, all this government of all these people that are taking bribe from politicians, man, how do they do it? What kind of hearts do they have? Have you been given a bribe and you rejected it? If they've ever give you, they've not given you bribe and you rejected it, then I shouldn't be listening to you because there's a difference between opportunity, having an opportunity to do something and you didn't do it and not having that opportunity. So anybody could say, I can never, until you've been presented with something that would either make you say yes or no. If you have not been presented with that, then never say never. For me, I know things I can say never because I've been presented with those things. I've been in that place and I said no. So I can boldly come out and say no, so I can't do this because I've been presented with that temptation. For instance, I said, I'm not ever going to sleep with someone's wife. I'm not going to sleep with an underage. I'm not going to have sex with an underage ever. It's not going to happen. And I'm not going to sleep with someone's wife. Those are my personal, these are my personal, these are things I said from the go. Personally, I said I'm not going to do these two things when it comes to sex. But aside that, I could have sex with my age mates. I could have sex with people that maybe that are close to around my age. I'm not going to come and say, oh, I don't have sex at all. No, I could have sex with people that are within this age range. But someone with a marital status, a woman that is married, is not going to happen. Then if a, an underage or... Yeah, an underage. I'm not going to sleep with an underage. Now, have I been presented with the boat? It has happened severally. I've had married women that they've made advances, direct advances at me, and it didn't work. So I could boldly come out and say, that wouldn't work. But am I going to say, if I'm presented with a 200 million Naira buy, I'm going to say no. I don't know yet because no one, nobody has presented me with that amount of bribe. But if you present, if you give me 500k bribe or 1 million or 5 million or 10 million, I'm not going to do what you want because I've been presented with that amount before and I turned it down. I turned it down. So temptations come in categories. You understand? They come in their categories. When you've not got into a specific category, don't say I can't. That's what I'm saying right so for you put all your efforts take all your effort put it in trying to see what the people ahead of you did that are irredeemable that are not pardonable avoid those mistakes those are the mistakes you should be keen on avoiding right and um you said you're in your early 20s um i won't say you have time i don't tell people that they have time because that could be another, <laughs> it's a way to make people feel good. But the reality is nobody has time. You understand? Nobody has time. Someone, I was talking with an 18-year-old, um, I think um, when I was in Port Harcourt around December, you know, one of my one of my cousins, no, one of yeah, my uncle's child. So I was talking with the boy and he said, but uncle, I'm just, that was all he told me, uncle, I'm just 18. I said, yeah, yo, 18. Any child that is being given birth to today, you're 18 years older than that child. So you're not a kid. You're 10. Oh, you're just 10. You're 10 years older than a child that was given birth to today. And 10 years is a long time. So what, I, what I'm saying is, yeah, you're in your early 20s. I'm not telling you to put pressure on yourself. What I'm just saying is, if that is the path you want to take, the public speaking part, then soak yourself with being in the community. You should find online communities, offline communities where people discuss 
where you want to. People that are where you are, you should be in their midst, both online and offline. If you go to online forums where public speakers converge, you should um, go to Twitter spaces and listen to people speak. You should um, you should go to a place like Clubhouse and listen to people speak, then speak too. When you go to those places online where you have to speak, or somewhere like this, where you have to speak, every opportunity where you have to speak and get your voice recorded so that you can sit back and listen to what you've been. So you could use all of these mediums. You could even do, you could maybe do your own mini podcast. You could find, you could do your own podcast, maybe on social media. You could do Facebook Live. You could, you could do your mini podcast and then um, invite people that are, I'm not saying you should go and invite the big guys so that you're not going to get frustrated when they tell you no. For me, I would advise, find people that are at your level. It could be your course mate. You know, take one of your course mates. You could take them maybe every week, do a recording, ask them questions, interview them, they give you answers. You record it, keep it, and use it to build yourself. There's always where, somewhere to start with. You must not start at the top. Because nobody even started at the top. So do these little things. Do small recordings here and there. You know, ask people to do a visual, maybe to film you, to video you. And when you're talking, in, interview your classmates, interview your friends in your compound. Talk with them, ask them questions about life. Interview them, record it. Go back, listen to it, see the things you're not doing right. See your hand gesture, see the way your maybe your smile, see all those things because you want to be a public speaker. And a public speaker is someone that would appear before thousands of people or sometimes millions of people. So you don't need to, to you don't need to wait till you become that public speaker like Les Brown and the rest of them. What can you do now with what you have with your phone? Can you can you go back home and tell your sibling, tell your elder brother, your elder sister, or your younger one, say, see, I'm going to ask you a question, you're going to answer. Just record me, you know, make you see. And from there, you build capacity. That is what I'm saying. You don't need to do all the minimization of mistakes or whatever. Just do stuff and get going, right? So I don't know if I attempted your question. Thank you so much. All right. Um, thank you, too. I think um, that question was a valid one because it's going to help a whole lot of people, too, um, that are in your shoes. Okay. Can we get someone else before we round off? I'm looking at 9 o'clock. Um, one more person, and uh, we're going to round off. You could unmute your mic if you want to speak. Then uh, we're going to close, and we have um, two days to go. We have Thursday and Friday, so we're going to do this more and next, and then um, we're going to shut down. If you missed the previous sections, you could go to YouTube. I dropped the link in the group. Go to YouTube and watch those sections and listen to them. Okay, let's have one more person, and then um, we close for tonight. So, anybody available to speak? Or meet your mic and let's go. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Yeah, Emmanuel. God with us. How far now? How are you doing? I'm good, sir. And you? I'm good evening, also. Everyone. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, I have a question, sir. Okay, for for quite some time now, I've been trying to build my audience on social media. Okay, I'm a graphic designer and also um, a content writer. So for this end, I've been trying to um, build my audience. But um, one thing I found out is... Um, 
the um I, the low engagement and also another thing i noticed when i was going through my um through my list my fellowship list i saw that most of these people that they are actually people that i know maybe from school maybe i knew from school like past schools and stuff like that so it has been on my mind that okay should i should i actually create a new a new account like start up a new one from scratch and attract the audience that i need or i should just stick with um with the one i'm currently using so that's my question sir did i just... yeah i got your question um first off let's do a recap you what do you do just uh, remind and repeat it again. Let's hear you. Okay, I'm a graphic designer. I I help um brand and small business owners to create um captivating and functional designs that help to boost their okay. visibility and sales. Okay, and um, what do you what's your what what do you want to achieve with it? Do you want to um? you want to get clients that are going to pay you for your services or do you plan yes. to build a personal brand where people can pay you for influencing and the rest so which of those okay so that part is um, is for um to get clients all right and um <clears throat> from what you said you mentioned that your current page the current page you're using on social media it's filled up with people that you're familiar with from the past, right? Yes. And you're asking if you should create a new account or you should um, you should remove them. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, the both options are valid, you know. Both of options are valid. You could either create a new account or remove most of the people that you think are going to hinder you, to hinder your growth, you know. And any of the options you're taking is a hard option, is a hard decision to make because building from scratch is difficult, dead difficult. Then removing people that you're familiar with is very difficult because it takes another level of stiffness, it takes another level of discipline for you to remove people that you know from the past. I did it, but I'm not going to tell you that it's not possible. It's more than possible. I did it in 2021 because that was when I started, I became intentional on social media. You know, before now, I used to create, I used to joke a lot. <laughs> First of all, I was not active on social media. I was not active on Facebook because Facebook is a platform I'm very active on today. So before now, I was a computer maintenance engineer. That means I was hustling offline. I was making small money offline. And uh, my social, I never knew anything about what everything we were saying today, building, personal brand content creation. I don't know any of those things until 2019 went 2020. That was when I had an idea that oh, people could even make view so much on, on the internet. I never had any single idea and I'm serious about it. And then 2021 was when I said, okay, I need to do something, you know. Then I've already I've already used Two years. I've used uh, 2019, 2020 to do my freelance writing. So I got back to social media. I said, okay, uh, let me build. That was when I decided to start creating the kind of content I create today. But I had to remove, I removed 3,000, I think 3,200 or something people from my time, from my list. I did that. The reason why I didn't create a new account was because um, that account, the account I'm using 
it's a very old account. I think I created it in 2009. You know, so that account was an old account. I said, okay, for the fact that it's going to have some kind of credibility because of the time it was created, and then um, you know, old accounts become with some kind of authority and everything. So I said, okay, let me leave it. But I have I had to take a hard decision, and the hard decision was, I'm going to remove everybody. The people that were left, I had 112 persons on my list when I removed. I was doing it. What I did was because if you if you remove people at a stretch, Facebook would limit your account. So what I do is every day I wake up, I, I remove like 50, 60 or 70 persons. I think 50, 50 every day. Sometimes I will give it a space. So I did it for a, I did it for close to two, two to three months, right? I was removing people, removing. I removed everybody I knew from my past because the only people on my Facebook wall, on my Facebook um, page then were people I knew from Port Harcourt. I was born and bred in Port Harcourt, like at the turn of the story. <laughs> so people I knew from Port Harcourt, from, child, from childhood, and the people I knew from my secondary school days, and the people I knew in Imo State University, because I schooled at Imo State University. So the combination of these three categories of people mean it, it, it actually meant that I would have never been this person that I am now. I will not even be talking with you guys, because I for no known that. I would have known none of you. I would have never come across any of you, because... I'll be trying to be on the safe side. Like, let me not create the kind of content I'm creating today. And then uh, the people from the past will come and say, ah, not so, now you don't get sense like this. You know, so I had to remove them. And I told myself something. I said, what do you want to get out of social media? I said, I want to build a personal brand. I gave myself the answer. I said, I want to build a personal brand. And I want, to, I want my page to attract clients. I said, okay, if you remove these people, if you leave these people, um, do they pay you stipends every month? These people that are on your timeline, on your page, do they, do they send money to you every month, allowance? I said, no. I said, so why are you leaving them here? I said, I don't know. Then the other side of me said, remove every one of them. You're going to meet them offline. The funny thing is, I meet, I meet those guys offline with course, we drink together, we laugh. So we're still friends. So removing these people doesn't mean you have any issues with them. You don't just you want to you want to build a business. And in business, the thing about building a business is the business is not about you. It's about the business itself because your business is a different entity from you. You know, you're not your business. You're just the one running your business. That's the that's the more reason why you see some people sell their businesses to someone else, and they are still alive. The business is still alive. I mean, some people die before their business. There are some founders that have died. They've died, but their businesses are still running. Some people, some businesses die before their founders. Like the business die, the founders still there alive. They breach. The founder has even and started another business. So you now realize that your business is not you. So you're not going to be treating your business with the personalization thing like, oh, it's about, no, it's not about you. Your business is just, you're just the owner of the business at the moment because your graphic design, you, you need to now change it. You need to transition it into a business so that you can end properly with it. I told someone yesterday, how to transition into business, you know, from, from hustling. Because hustling and business is not the same. Uh, you could listen to that replay much later, the one of yesterday. So, um, about your decision, you could decide. You could decide to, if you have the mind to remove those people, do it. But for me, it's not even about having the mind. It's about consequences. If you don't remove them, the consequences will be dire. <laughs> you know, so I don't motivate people these days. I tell them about consequences. Just like someone telling me, not so what drives you? 
what motivates you to do everything you're doing? I say, I'll tell you that I'm not motivated. I'm scared of the consequences of not doing. What is the consequences of not doing what I wake up every day and do? What are the consequences? My rent is going to expire and I can't renew my rent. I can't eat properly. I can't eat what I want to eat. I can't solve my medical problems. If I hear, they call me that my mom is almost dead, that they need such a certain amount of money, I can't raise it because I need something to motivate me. No, I don't need motivation. I need to know that this is what is going to happen if you don't do. So you're going to be thinking of the consequences of not doing, not what is going to motivate you to do. No. Motivation are for children. Adults don't need motivation. Adults talk about consequences. So what you should do is sit down and ask yourself consequences of not building, consequences of not removing those people, which is what I asked myself. I said, if I don't remove these people, what are the consequences? I'm not going to, first of all, I'm not going to be the non so that everyone knows me as. Secondly, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sell. I'm not going to be able to sell websites to my audience, to my, to my clients. I'm not going to create the kind of content I'm creating, um, which invariably, I'm not going to be able to feed. I'm not going to be able to do a whole lot of things because I'm looking at the faces of one or two persons that I can remove with the click of a button. Man! Hey, <laughs> God. So, and funny thing is, I removed them and nothing happened. If anything should happen because I removed them, then it's fine. Because I don't go to their businesses to joke. Most of these people have businesses offline. I don't go there to sit with them and laugh. I don't do that. So they shouldn't come to my own business and joke. My business is online. So what I'm saying is take a decision. If you want to build from, from scratch, it's fine. You could do that. If you want to build, if you want to remove these guys, and we build to the gate. For me, it's almost the same thing. It's almost the same thing. The difference is not much. But if I would advise, I would say you could remove them. So that, because a new account, you have to, you ignore everybody. You're not going to remove everybody on your list. That's not possible because I don't know who is going to do that. You know, that's not possible. There are some people that are on your list. They might be 100, they might be 200, they might be 300. You would, those people would be the people you're going to now start rebuilding with, you know. So when I started removing the people I know from the past, I realized that I had some foreigners, some few foreigners that I don't know how I added them before that time. I just allowed the foreigners to be there because they were like the strangers that were from my timeline. So I allowed them. Then I allowed a few Nigerians that I didn't know from anywhere. So altogether, the people, that, the people that were on my list were 112. So I started with 112 people in 2021. And I have 16K followers now. I would have had more than that amount if I, need, if I wanted to. You know, I, I could create a controversial post and attract people from everywhere. I know how to I know how the viral thing works, like how to go viral and everything. But for me, like I said, I'm about results. Consequences and results. If I'm going to do something, it's not if it's not going to give me the kind of results that people think people thought it gave me, it's a problem. So you go viral and two, three days you've gone viral and you go back to normalcy and you didn't get anything from getting viral except more consequences of going viral is a problem. Going, you might go viral and mess up the little reputation you've built. Now, more people came and these people are not useful to you. You can't even sell to them because they came with a mindset of let's come here and digest more viral content, more, you know, so they came with that and they are not getting it anymore because you now want to sell to them. So this is my this is my own this is my mentality to going viral and everything, right? So if I want to go viral, then I should go for the right reason. 
I should go for the right. I don't even want to go. I don't need any of those things. I'm not. I'm not a show person. I. I'm a very private person, except for the fact that I'm even building online. I said that I would have been a very private person that nobody knows out there. But it's fine. What I'm saying is, pick one of the options and start rebuilding. Is that you're building or you're rebuilding? Any of them is fine. What you should be now concerned about is how do I build or rebuild? I think that should be the core of the question, right? So and this is 903. Let me see if I can um, do this to maybe 10 or 10, 15. Now, rebuilding. Uh, whether you're building or you're rebuilding, it's almost the same process. You're a graphic design artist and uh, a graphic designer and the people you want to talk to are those that you want to hire you for services. That means you need to show these people that you're capable of being hired. You need to show them that if they pay you 50,000 or 100K or 200K or 150 for designs, you're able to deliver. You're able to, you could deliver, you have a reputation, you have an expertise, you have your accountable, you're reliable, you're transparent, you're honest. That's how you are going to stay in the game for a longer time. I told someone yesterday that if you don't have all these qualities, you might be in the game for some time, but you're not going to last in the game. There are lots of people that maybe you knew them in 2022, 2023, some of them in 2020, but you can't see them today. It's not as if they have something going on for them elsewhere. That's not the case. They don't have anything going on for them. They have gone into oblivion. They faded. And the reason why they faded was because they didn't have these qualities that I mentioned. So it goes beyond, beyond having expertise. It goes beyond that. Now, you want to rebuild. Um, you have your target audience. Um, let's say the people you want to be creating, doing your branding and your designs for uh, small business owners, or maybe they are tech startups, or maybe they are, they are people that are into food business, they are into sell, you know, it could be small business owners, it could be tech startups, it could be, it could be firms, it could be bigger firms, it could be people that want to launch, yeah, it could just be any set of people, but you know the people you want to talk to. The, one of the most powerful ways to talk to these people or to make them come to you or to make them attracted to you is when they feel you're helping them or when they know that you're trying to help them. And helping them doesn't mean you're going to their house to carry their chair on your head for them. No, you're helping them. You're going to be helping business owners if you're targeting business owners, you're not selling, you're not coming to tell business owners that come and do your graphic design, you need it for your business. That's bullshit content, whatever. I don't even know what that means. You know, someone is into graphic design and the person is targeting small business owners. And the person is, the content the person is creating is, um, con um your, your logo is bad, you know, why not come to us and do a new logo? Those things, it doesn't even make sense. You're not even talking to nobody with that. So now you now start asking, what are the problems that business owners are facing? They might be facing problems with tips, tips on how to do, 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 so, so, so thing in this, this, this kind of business. Go and look for those things for them and share with them. That's when you are going to win their attention. If you want to win the attention of a woman, then you should start talking about how she can revamp her wig or how she can fix her nails, how she can keep her nails for. I don't know any of those things. I'm just saying those are the things that are going to attract an average female or how she can maybe 
maybe she has a problem with her hair edges or anything, how she can fix that or how she can... These are the things that would attract an average female. Then you want to attract an average male. You're talking about how to cure um, quick ejaculation. So this week, I'm going to share 20 things you would do one by one. I'll be sharing it every day, Monday, Tuesday, 20 things you do to, so that you're not going to ejaculate when you're having sex. Men are going to be very interested. That is their area of interest. That is what most of them battle with. The same way, if, if, you, want to, if you want business owners to be attracted to your page, you're not going to be talking about graphic design or why they need good design. Those things they know that they, everybody knows that they need good design. You're going to help them with what they are struggling with, which is what? It could be landing how to, maybe they are looking for information on how to land a grant, a government grant federal government loan or grant go and get that information and bring it to them say if you're a nigerian business small business owner and you're looking to get a grant check in the comments section i've dropped 10 links on how you can get a grant number one do it like this go to this platform register like this number two do this you're going to bring business owners to your page with that they have trusted you first of all like this person has our interest in heart. Go to Emmanuel's wall. Go to Emmanuel's page. Emmanuel is share business tips where I never heard before. Emmanuel is going to share it in a way that you're going to scream like, wow, where has it been? Now, them self go to ask you, say, what do you do? Like, want to patronize you. You could go and find 50 or 40 small business ideas that coppers, coppers that just left camp, that they can start, they can, they can attempt. The reason why you're doing that is you're being futuristic. The copper that left camp that did his or her POP would likely go into business. And if they go into business, if you help them to make a business decision, like, Maybe you listed 10 businesses, they can start with 50,000. Now you've given them a business idea. And if they start that business, they want to get a logo. They want to get a flyer. They want to get, um, yeah, they want to do their branding. They want to do, who are they going to reach out to you? You that gave them, that you gave them something they didn't get from outside. So they are with you at that point. They don't want to go to some other person to do their graphic designs and everything. They'll fall back to you. There was one post I shared about how people that are into, people that do um, CVs, people that do resumes and CVs, you know, how they can get people that would pay for their services. I didn't tell them to go out there and start. I didn't tell them to go out there and say, I create CVs, come and patronize my service. You know what I told them? I said, go out there on your wall, go to Naira land, go to your WhatsApp status and tell people that I'm going to create a Telegram group or a WhatsApp group. When I create that go, I'm going to be sharing job posts for you guys. Now, see where I'm coming to. If you start sharing job posts to people that are job seekers, these people are looking for jobs. They are looking for jobs. They will get, if you start sharing job posts to them, they've trusted you first. Like, oh, more, this guy is good, though. We did share job posts for us every day. You could go to Twitter. You could go to Facebook groups. You could go to Indeed.com. You could go to Jobberman.com. You, you could go to LinkedIn Job. Take all those jobs, bring it to that small community that you built for them. Drop it there, drop the link. When you do that, you're buying their trust. Do you think they are going to go outside and do their CVs and their resumes? Because for every time you for every time you share a job post, you're going to put it at the end of the job post that I do CVs and resumes. 
If you say then go go outside, go do this thing, when do they give them that kind of information? Imagine someone that lands a job that you shared. If the person gets the job, the person needs a CV. The person needs a resume. Or the person might have a resume or a CV and they need to do a revamp. Now you then go meet. This is how these things work. No be spiritual matter, no be no be magic. This where humans. Once people feel that you're you're out for them, you're out to give them so much, they are not going to look elsewhere. You know, if you're a car dealer, you're into car sales, and you're helping people with tips, little tips on how to like if your tire is shaking like this, you know, put oil like this and do it like this. You're sharing that kind of thing on Facebook or Instagram or anywhere. If you're if you're oil, if you're out of oil in your car, touch this place, do it like this. You're sharing those tips with them. If they want to buy moto, you just said they go go another place. You're the first person they are going to recommend. You're the first person they are going to buy from. You're the first person that they will say, see this guy, give him money, you know, go wrong with your money. But if you wake up every day and say, come and buy a car, Toyota Camry is available. Man, we we'll all this car and we want to collect our money. Off. So what I'm saying is, you want, to, you want to win someone over, help them. Be that person that you, you're going to give before they take. Because anybody that wants to take before they give, um, you're not going to survive in the game. But if you go with the mindset of giving before taking, you're going to survive. You're going to outlast anybody in the game. When you help people, you make money. When you help more people, you're going to make more money. When you help more and more people, you're going to make more and more money. If you take this quote, this is the simplest quote that I can give to anybody in life. As easy as that, it's a difficult thing to do because sometimes we want to take first. That's why we're looking for, oh, where is client? You know, I need a client. I need what have you given first? Nothing, but you want to take. That's where the problem lies. So go back. If you want to target small business owners, if you want to target startups, for instance, maybe tech startups, then start look, go and look for problems that tech startups are facing. Go to Go to Quora.com, see the questions small business owners are asking. When you go there, type business, maybe small business owners or small business. When you go there, you type it, see the questions they are asking, take those questions, come back to your timeline or to your page, answer those questions for your audience. You could say something like, I was reading through a, an online forum today and I saw someone ask this question about business. I'm going to answer the question here for you guys. And the beautiful thing is, one person is asking one question, and you, you now realize that there are, a whole, there, there are a whole lot of people that are eager to get the answer to that question. Just like we're here now, um, you've asked this question. Emmanuel asked the question about graphic design. There's someone here that might want to ask the same question that Emmanuel has asked. But the person, maybe the person is shy or the person couldn't get to take the mic and ask. From everything I'm saying now, the person has gained. The person doesn't even have to ask me again because I've answered. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to go out there, bring the questions that are in the minds of your audience. Bring it back. Put it on your wall. Answer those questions because the greatest content the most powerful form of content is asking ask, and, and getting answers to questions that are in people's minds. If you create that kind of content, you're going to be so big. I'm not talking about big in the form of numbers, like getting a hundred K followers. No, I'm talking about big in, 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 the, in the form of impact. You're going to be so big when it comes to impact. Because you're talking to people with what they are facing. You know that, okay, this person might be thinking, 
how do I get a grant? The day you're going to create a content on how to get grants, the person will say, God, Emmanuel, you're a messiah. You understand? Man, do you know what that your content did to me? So if someone is not telling you your content did this to me, you're not creating good content. If someone doesn't come to your DM and tell you that, I read your content, I did this and this work, and I made this, something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with your content. I mean, you need to go back and start working all over again. So what I'm saying is you don't need all the you don't need all the audience in the world. If you're if you're starting from scratch, um, I'm sure you should know how to get your first set of audience. You go to Facebook groups and um, you know make posts so that people should follow you and all of those things. I don't want to go into that. What I'm saying is wherever you're going to make comments on the post of the people that are established and everything so that you could attract people to your timeline. Before you bring people, before you make a comment or you make a post in a group on any social media platform or anywhere that is going to attract people to your page, please, your house should be in order. And the way your house is going to be in order is they should come there, they should be able to connect your comments that you made somewhere that is so reasonable with what they are seeing on your timeline. They should not come to your page and see something that is different from the poster. Like the poster is the opposite of what, you know, it happens a whole lot. You see this beautiful comment from someone and you go to their page and you just, just you know, you're wondering like, this person at this person will type that, you understand? So. You don't want to be that person. You want them to be amazed at what maybe the comment you dropped somewhere or the post you made somewhere. When they come to your page, they are going to now be, God, I'm finished. This guy is so good. And I've given you the kind of content tips that you should be creating. You could take different business. If you want to be creating, if you want to target small business owners for your graphic design, you could take each business Take each business and help businesses uh, um, individually. That means you could you could you could find something that people that sell shoes are struggling with, and you make a content for people that sell shoes alone. You could you could pick another you could take people that sell um, clothes. You could pick another industry. You could just pick it that way. But what I'm saying is, the goal is I want to help people so that they can trust me and buy from me. So when people are saying KLT, no like and trust, you know, you hear it everywhere. Now, be this thing where I tell you, nothing again. It's not as if it's one, it's one complicated thing. It's as easy as this. Help people to make money. And the help should be a genuine one. It shouldn't be a help that is half as hard. It could be a genuine help. If you want to really help people to create content, which if you want to help people with your content, create solid content. Create content that is actionable. If you see the kind of content I create, if I want to create the content and say, I want five ways you can, or if you are a graphic designer, this is how you can get and land a job. If you go to Facebook and see when I create those kind of content, They'd be like textbook. <laughs> you understand? I'll put everything I know in my life about that. I'll put it there. I don't even care how lengthy it is. I don't care. Anybody that doesn't read it, the person no need it. The person is really didn't need it in the first place. So if you see it and say, oh, it's so lengthy, I can't read it, then move on. It's not for you. Anybody, person where they desert, they know they beg up to drink water. So if, if me, I believe that we have three types of audience. The people that know what we want to share with them, the people that they know it in depth, that's the first category. The second category are the people that have basic knowledge of that thing. They don't know it in depth. They know they've heard of it. Then the last category of people are those that do not have an idea about it. They've not heard of it. They don't know it. When you're creating content, for the last category of people, the people 
that don't know what you're sharing. Even if it's one person in your audience, if you have 20 people followers and one person doesn't know what you're sharing, share for that person for that day. The remaining 19,000 plus, they should, they should get out. Don't even, don't, don't care. Another day, you should, see, there's another content you're going to create. The 19,000 plus people, some of them would not know that content. They might not have heard of it before. So when you're sharing, share with the mindset of, I'm sharing for those that don't know this thing. Anybody that knows it, I'm not talking to you. So that you're going to share as much as you can. Because if you don't come, if you don't share with this mindset, you might have, you might see something you want to share with your audience that is going to help some people. You could tell yourself that ah, this thing, people go now and wear well. Maybe it might be how to, might be how to change whatever on WhatsApp. Do not say everybody is using WhatsApp. Why would I share it? There is always someone that doesn't know what a lot of people know out there. Talk to that person every time you have the opportunity to listen to And when you do that, you are going to be grateful. I'll prefer one person to come to my DM and say, no, so that post you made was for me than getting validation from 10,000 people that would not use the post for anything. No. So I don't know if, you are, if I answered your question. This is a 9.24. I've even exceeded 9 o'clock. <laughs> Emmanuel, I can hear you. So thank you so much. I'm really grateful. Thank you for the tips you shared. They were really, 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 really helpful. Thank you. All right. Uh, you could you could listen to the replay all over again and take the points. That is when I I'll publish it on on YouTube. Maybe tomorrow or next. And um, Emmanuel is going to be the last person we are going to attend to today. We have tomorrow and Thursday. Sorry, Thursday and Friday, tomorrow and Friday. So if you have um, your questions, get them ready. And I'll try to give um, as much as much um, answers as I can. I'm a human. I'm a human being. I Everything I'm doing is within my scope of experience and knowledge. So... They might be wrong, they might be right. I'm not coming here to act as if everything I see is 100%. Nobody is going to even brag about giving 100%. Nobody, right? I'm just giving my best. So I'm going to end the recording now and um, so that we can close for today. And um, let me do that quickly.